This beautiful brunette wig is called Bonnie by Uniwigs, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the inside of the cap and go over some features that make this wig super easy to wear. On the Uniwigs website, Bonnie says that she measures 16 inches. Now I'm not exactly sure how Uniwigs is doing their measurements. Every wig retailer has their own way of doing it, but when I measured from the crown down, I got 19 inches. She is layered, so there are some shorter pieces throughout, but the longest measurement on the side where it's hitting me right here is actually a 19 inch. Bonnie is a beautiful warm brown with highlights throughout. I'm gonna get close to the camera and show you what this looks like inside in front of my ring light and then I'll take you outdoors. We have an overcast day today and you can see what it looks like outside. So I like to keep my thumbs at the ear tabs Put them there and then I'm going to place the hairline of the wig where I want my hairline to be. This is a really important step because if you have a receding hairline, you don't want to put the wig way back here. Just like how I have a very far forward hairline, you can see that it actually goes down to almost the center of my forehead. I don't wear my wigs there and I can show you why. If I put my wig where my natural hairline is, then I don't have much of a forehead and it doesn't really look as natural as it could. Likewise, if you have a very receding forehead and you wear your wig way back there, it's also not going to look as natural as it could. The rule that you wanna follow is the four finger rule. So we're gonna put the four fingers up and where that fourth finger is, that's where the hairline of the wig. The question I get very often is, how does your wig stay on without the use of adhesives or glue? The answer is simple, I wear glueless caps. Bonnie has reinforced ear tabs and then a stretchy elastic band that goes around the perimeter of the wig. These bands can be adjusted at the nape with the adjustable straps. Pull them in to make the wig fit smaller around your circumference and let it out if you need a little bit more room. Bonnie is on, she is secure with absolutely no adhesives. She's not going anywhere and I can pull on it and it's not coming off of my head. I have two little kids and they're all over me all the time and my wig has not gotten snatched. I'm just gonna knock off the excess. Okay, so if you're worried about the excess powder looking crazy, don't worry, we're gonna clean this up. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pat the wig and let that powder settle in. Let's check it out on my hand. I feel like that's already looking much brighter and the knots are a little more subtle. With the spoolie end, we're just gonna go through really close to the part, basically wipe off any excess powder that may have gotten on the hair, just cleaning it up. I got my spoolie wet with a little bit of water from the sink. It's a small step that I think makes a big difference in just making that part line pop. Again, like I said, especially if you have dark bio hair underneath. I like to do a little density check just for a visual to show you how much hair is on Bonnie. And so what I'm gonna do since I have it parted in the side is I'm just gonna take this side portion here and I'm just gonna twist it so you can see how thick the hair is. Like I said, she's a healthy, healthy, medium to high density hair. But for those who have hair loss, a lot of times we're not used to having so much hair in our head. So I do like to show you a visual so you can really tell how much hair you're dealing with. 